Today is Friday the 13th. Are you a superstitious person? Do you really believe all this nonsense they talk? Surely you can't be guided by the things they say that come from superstitions? Today being Friday the 13th, can it possibly be that you as an individual are guided in any way by superstitious thoughts? It always amazes me how many intelligent people really are terribly superstitious. How can they put it all together? Do you really believe in luck? Do you know the origin of it? The word luck itself actually comes from an ancient Egyptian god, a meaning a god who is not the real god, a false god. But we must go a lot deeper than this. You know, these superstitions really have all their origins in the evil. And I guess most people don't ever consider this. Have you really thought where those superstitions began? Or is it simply that your mother had them or your grandmother and you've picked them up? No, they really do come from all sorts of evil origins. Did you know that? Maybe you don't care anyway. You say, so what? That's what I've always believed since I was a little child and that's where it is. And anyway, Richard, I always find that on the 13th everything goes wrong. Now just a minute. If you really believe that way, you've missed an awful lot of what God has said. But there's something more. The Bible tells us to be very careful of the evil that is around us in our nation. He told the Israelis the same thing. Let me read to you from Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 from the Living Bible. And it says this, No Israeli may practice black magic or call on evil spirits for aid or be a fortune teller, or be a serpent charmer, a medium, a wizard, a witch, or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone doing these things is an object of horror and disgust to the Lord. And that has not changed over the years. It's still a horror and a disgust to the Lord in this generation. And most of our superstitions come from witchcraft if you follow out their derivation. The second thing is this. Witchcraft is anti-God and God is anti-witchcraft. So if you're involved in such things today you are against God himself. Or you say, Richard, it's ridiculous. There's no such thing today. Oh yes, there is. Where have you been? Are you so out of touch? Well, you say, it's been in the human race for thousands of years and you're absolutely right. It was in Babylon in the days of the Old Testament going back three, four thousand years. Yes, it was there too. But there's such a power within witchcraft. There's such a power in all these evil things. But it's not a God-given power. The origin, the source of the power is absolutely wrong. Notice also, will you, that witchcraft is growing rapidly today. And there are witches' covens in all sorts of places. Yes, in suburbia. There may be one down your street. Oh, you say, Richard, you really are being carried away this morning. Oh, no, I'm not. We have discovered a number of them within this district. There are others in the country around us. And there are witches right across this nation as there are in England. And did you know that in Salem, Massachusetts, they have their seminars and they fly witches from every part of the world in chartered aircraft? Maybe you haven't quite been on the inside of all that's happening. But witchcraft is very powerful because the power behind it is very strong. And so many of us like to have a power within our lives and we just love to have this. But at the same time, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you can have nothing to do with these things. When a source is wrong, you cannot touch it. Secondly, belief in luck and coincidence is not belief in God. Oh, you say, Richard, that's such a dogmatic statement. It is, but it's very true. If you really believe in luck, if you believe in coincidence, you're having a problem with the Lord your God. You see, nothing happens in this world that God does not allow or send. The book of Job explains this very carefully. It's a very fascinating book. 
the physical afflictions he had by the way came from the devil they didn't come from God God allowed them for his own purpose and it was a very strange purpose what we find so difficult is that he allowed the righteous to suffer and we never do understand that and God never explains it but God was involved as he always is you see God is sovereign at all times he is everywhere he knows everything he is in control you may remember in the book of Job in the first chapter that the man th went through the most terrible day that anyone could have gone through it's almost inexplicable he lost all he possessed and he lost his ten children all within a matter of hours but what intrigues me with Job is what happened when it was all over because it tells us in Job chapter 1 and verse 20 after he received all this news at this Job got up tore his robe and shaved his head then he fell on the ground to worship that's fantastic but the second thing he went on and said naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord how many of us having gone through the sort of horrendous experience that Job had could possibly say thank you Lord I praise your precious name because I know you're still in control you see he did not believe in luck he believed in God and he believed in a sovereign God who is in charge at all times no Job didn't understand what God was doing and he expresses that but he did believe in him and he never altered so at the end of that terrible day Job is on his face worshipping and that's fantastic and notice also God is involved in everything whether I understand him or not whether I agree with him or not he's still involved and sometimes I simply don't understand him yesterday I happened to go to the hospital to visit one of our ladies who is very very ill with cancer the sweetest soul such a blessing to others a very large family a devoted family and a number of the children were there they weren't young children they were in their teens and twenties but the love of those children for that mother touched everyone who came into the room Lord why is she dying I don't know I don't understand it Lord do you really realize what will happen if you take her from the family of course he does he knows everything but he's still there and he's still in control and he's still working for his ends but I don't understand him God is sovereign luck is not luck comes from that goddess in Egypt the third thing I want to share with you is the devil can use superstitions against us I can imagine someone getting up and turning off the set at this point and saying this fellow is completely gone he doesn't believe in the devil oh yes I do as a matter of fact I find he's very active I find he's active in individual lives I find he's active in community I find he's active everywhere and if you've missed that I don't think you've got your spiritual eyes very wide open and just by the way notice that Jesus believed in the devil even if you don't and the devil came against Jesus and I think he's very active he can use superstitions to bring fear and he does fears to the point of panic and we've seen this in people fears to the point of terror anything to keep you away from Jesus Christ anything to keep me away from the Lord my God if he can keep our eyes off center if he can keep our thoughts off center he's doing the work that he's come to do he's here to destroy and he doesn't care how he does it he will do it in your life and he'll do it in mine and we must be aware the devil will use superstitions in every way I was fascinated when I started this talk to work out with other people if the superstitions here in the United States were any different from Britain but I found that most of them are the same I guess we sent them across 
It's a pity we did, isn't it? But isn't it fascinating how it works on us? You see, the devil focuses our minds on luck to keep us away from the truth of God. Oh, I broke a mirror. Oh dear, two things have gone wrong. I know there'll be a third. I'm just watching for the third. And the devil's in the corner laughing, saying, look at that sucker, just waiting for the third thing to happen. Or it sometimes works in other ways. These people with black cats, you do realize, of course, that black cats are very involved in witchcraft, not by their choice, but they are. That's part of witchcraft. When my wife was leaving home for our wedding, some poor neighbor was rushing everywhere to find a black cat to flow across her path. Not really clear what difference it made. In fact, I know it didn't make any difference at all, but there had to be a black cat if we were going to have luck. We didn't have luck, we had the Lord our God. And after some years of struggle, we found a peace that's wonderful. But it wasn't always like that. Also notice, the devil keeps people with old wives' tales in their minds, which are superstition. You do realize this, don't you? A lot of the old wives' tales that come from Europe, especially from Britain, are really simply superstitions and they just tie people's minds up and they're simply not true and yet they're believed in an amazing way by very intelligent people so what's the answer to all this? Oh, I think it's very simple we need the purifying truth of God our Father we need to know the Word of God we need to know what He says to us there's only one way to know the Word of God and that's to sit down and read it and most of us don't have time but we've got to do it and we've got to really absorb it and as you absorb the truth of God any superstitions any old wives tales will slowly begin to recede because the truth will take over and God's truth will prevail it always does today is Friday the 13th and God has given it to you for his glory live it to his glory whatever you're doing wherever you're going or maybe you're not going anywhere you may just be a person lying in bed listening to my voice then glorify God exactly where you are he's still in control he knows all about you and he loves you without end